This covers the content of the 27th of July. A workshop was held with my cyber wall in which we looked at Purple Mash once again. You will notice there have been some changes. So let's log into Purple Mash and have a look at it. This is showing what we mostly use to code. You'll click on that monkey icon with to code. A whole range of features are shown for us. And you can see them here. Featured. And you can see mine showing to code, which is something I use very often. And all the other aspects look pretty much the same. You can go to that search box, and that's really important. Here I'm choosing nursery school, so we've got a filtration. It's filtering all the nursery school year two. It's going to help you to be able to find what you're looking for. It's really, really useful. A new edition. And let's have a look at this one, science. So year two, that'll be grade two, yes, science. Year two. And you can see all the PDFs, science. which are the teacher materials. So these filters, year six, and we can choose literacy. And there it's filtered out all the relevant pieces that relate to literacy. And you can see all this is teacher material, support material for teachers. This will help you to just find exactly what you're looking for. Some of these PDFs are just worksheets that you can print out. This gives you some sort of idea of how much material there is in these specific areas. There's piles of useful material that you can use and make your teaching so more enriching. I think that this is a wonderful idea because now you have that you can focus your attention on your own particular teacher needs. So here we've got art and you can see all the artistic aspects of Purple Mash. If you scroll down, there's even the teacher notes. There's a whole lot of teacher notes. These notes will give you tools and guidance in the planning of your lessons. Make good use of them. There is so much here to just find. And if you want to click on those little red clear buttons, that's going to clear your filter. This brings all this resource material far more readily to hand that you can see instantly how much and what is available. Let's go to computing and I'm going to go with year two. So you can find relevant material that suits your particular age group, the grade that you're teaching. And look there, we've got a whole range of stuff that's relevant to my own particular need. Just play around here, grade four, year four, and home screen, still pretty much the same. And there's, we've got all to do's. Often a teacher wants to showcase learners' work to the parents or even to the class, and these are useful. And if you scroll down, you've got these display boards, which I cover in this tutorial. You'll see I talk about dis display, boards, display boards quite readily. And there's an English and Afrikaans. And you can see that the status bar at the bottom is showing some Afrikaans there. It's great to see that MASH are trying to accommodate Afrikaans learners as well and teachers, giving us some information. So English and Afrikaans. We'll have to investigate that a little bit more. I'm going to have a good look at the to-dos. Let's have a look at that. We click on the activities and to-dos are tasks that the teacher has set for the learners. So you'll find these very, very important. The green is just telling us that the tasks have ended, that they've been completed. The blue that they are still to be done. Pretty much the same as what it's always been. Um, if you look at our work folder, you can see everything is shown there as we had it before. I am sure that you'll find your way around the work folder quite easily. It almost mimics Windows Explorer. You will find it quite easy to get yourself back into the normal familiar space of Purple Mash. We remind ourselves that the teacher section is where you're going to find all the resources that teachers are sharing and your curriculum planning. This will give you the opportunity to access the content that is relevant for that particular moment in time curriculum and planning materials. So that's a very, very important part of Purple Mash for teachers. Here we're looking at the South African curriculum documents, which gives you all the planning. You can see you've got English home language over here, English home language, we've got life skills, everything's there. I'm going to open the English, so let's have a look at this. And I'm scrolling back to the 
this link will take you to the relevant content or a tool that would be relevant to help you to cover that content. Third week of term three, and we've got lots of work here on authors. And here we see it's Karen McCombie is the author. Grade sixes have an interest in scary stories, as you can see over here. Here's an example of a video that would show you an interview with one of the famous authors. You know how I said I get my ideas from all sorts of random places? You'll find loads of multimedia stuff on Purple Mash, and they use their videos very, very cleverly. Here's an activity that I've set already, but I will show you how to set a to-do or a task in a minute. These are examples that one must make great use of. Here's an example of a writing task, a template, and you can see that if I open it up, I can save it, and I'll just go through the whole process of how you would go about saving your work. So we have our activity, and this is where we would save our work, thus storing our to-dos or tasks. And you can see that the folders are pretty familiar to us from our experience with Windows Explorer. It's important to really name our files and set up our folders in an appropriate way. And we just type in our file name in the appropriate folder. You'll have to lay that out for yourselves. I'd like to show you how to set up a task for the kids to do. And the first thing is you lay out your sample task. I got this where to set a to-do to through the sharing button on the top, the green world button. And then you're going to set what's called a to-do, which is placed in that icon. And this is how you go about setting a to-do. You'll see there's a clipboard, which once clicked on will give you a little box, will prompt you for the title of your task. You then write a title, as I'm doing here. Then you'd give a description of what exactly the children would do. And after the description, you would find there is a red button which indicates that you can actually have a voice recording that would be fed to the learners as well. This could work quite well at our school because our children do have tablets and quite suitable for the learners that are more auditory. And then you've got the date, as I'm showing you the date that they would set it to do, and the date that they have to hand in their work. The to-do would be deactivated when the date of hand-in is working within time frames. The tag section is just indicating aspects that could be searched and help you to find your files in your work folders. These tasks will be displayed automatically in the children's work, as I'll show you in a moment. and. Uh, it's quite simple to do, all to do with assigning work to learners. Here we place or assign work to the given classes or learners. You can just decide where you want to save them. All right, now I'm going to show you how to assign work to a particular class. You can scroll down to find all the classes. The names of each child is listed as well as their classes. All the learners in the school will be shown in here and they are linked up to their respective teachers. Here I'm just giving you a demonstration of how you can choose specific children. So you can decide to allocate work to specific children. But in this particular case, I'm going to give it to the whole grade 6 group. And we press the button set to do. Let's use a display board to show the learner's work. You're going to go to that green world. It says sharing button. Green world sharing button. That's going to give you access to the display boards, the blogs and other things. Teachers can create a display board or a blog to display children's work, a wonderful way of showcasing work. And you do that by going to the shared section. You'll just look for the green world at the top of the screen. Now you can go about customizing your particular display board. It can be made to suit your particular need, subject, grade, or whatever you require. I'm going to make this for all grade sixes. You can make as many as you'd like. Purple Mash provides you with curriculum and planning documents. I've already spoken about this and showed you quite a bit, but I'd just like to go over it again and show you. It is that are most helpful for teachers. So let's have a look at the English section here. I'm just displaying a mind mapping tool, and here you see a whole lot of different templates that you can use. 
for your own particular needs. You can see how they move around and you just got to post these for the learners to complete. You're going to have to explore how to use and apply these in your classroom teaching. It's not difficult at all. After making tasks, you're going to want to save your work. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Right, so you're going to go, you're going to click on that red button to save all of your work on the top right hand side. On the red button, press save and exit. I'm going to choose where you want to save this particular file. You're going to look through all your folders and appropriately allocate it. It's all pretty straightforward, actually. That's the sharing section. And your work folder is going to take you to all your different files if you want to open them up again and have a good look at. There you can see the files and the folders all laid out in front of you. This is where you can make the necessary changes, them or change them to suit your own particular needs. So here we've got the literary or the literature activity that I showed you early on. I showed you this part earlier on, just setting a to-do. It's the second button to the left of the clipboard. And I'm going to set it as a to-do or a task. So I'm just going to go over that again, just so it's kind of clear to everybody. All right, so we're going to fill in all the details here around the task. We're going to indicate what the child must do. As you see, I'm filling in the details, description, and a date to start and a date to end. And again, remember we placed it as those grade six classes. We've allocated to the four classes. But you can allocate it in any way you choose. And then it's just basically to save it appropriately, save and exit, or you can exit. Now let's impersonate a learner to just see how it would feel to be a learner going into Purple Mash, just to see how they would interact. So we're going to impersonate learner. We have the whole learner experience here. Impersonating the learner takes us to that. We're going to just write in a name over here. And we know that we're dealing with grade 6A. So I'm going to just type in 6A and press enter. And you've got all the names of the learners here. So I'm going to choose Christopher as the learner that I will be impersonating. And as, as you can see, Purple Mash loads and we can see Christopher's name there. We are now in Purple Mash as if we were Christopher. And the, this alert icon, the bell, purple bell, is showing you all the work that Christopher needs to do, his to-dos. He's going to press the go to button, which opens up the activity to be done. These are all the activities that are set for Christopher. So you can see here we've got our literature. I'm bringing in a picture and we can just here. I'm going to write Christopher's name as if I am Christopher doing the particular activity, doing the to do. So we write in some information here about a book review. It would be talking about the story, giving some indication, front cover. And if it's a fairly scary story, we'll just put a front cover to that. And we'd be able to navigate around the project. So you can find the internal cover and we could write more details over here, all about our book review. And the back of the cover, the back of the book would be, or the project would be shown by that little green arrow at the bottom here, I'm just going to click it, and there you have more to write on. So this is quite versatile that you've got all these interesting aspects of navigating around the particular bit of work. To save, we click on this red button, save and exit. And that's going to take us to our work folders. Uh, it's Because it's Christopher, we got hand in or to continue work. So Christopher has this choice whether he wants to hand his work in, which I'm going to do now. So Christopher can now write a comment for his teacher, and it's now handed in. So let's go back to Mr. Bradley, who this takes us to the point of having to mark the learner's work or to appraise it. That is getting to the work that has been handed in by the learners. In this instance, we only have Christopher's work to look at. I'm going to just show you how to find that piece of work. So we're going to just scroll down and look. And here it says, what inspires you? I just wanted to show teachers how to look at children's activities. So I'm going to have a look. I'm going to look at the to do, which shows shapes done by grade 6C. So if I open it, you'll see these are all the learners that have handed in their work. So you've got all these samples of work. So if I had to look at a particular individual and we could choose Aiden, we open, then you'll see that it shows a sample of his work 
And this little button over here, it says teacher view. See what the pupils did in each stage comes up. It's a useful little connection. And it shows you in stage one, which was the first challenge, Aiden did this particular activity and gives you a little bit of information about how long he took and if he needed hints or not. And you can even view the learner's work. Then you it would actually show the piece of work that Aiden did in this particular instance. So here he had to, for example, click on the object and makes a triangle and he did it correctly. So it's going on to the next challenge. So this is very, very important that Purple Mesh shows you different ways of accessing the learner's work and marking it. Now, if I wanted to comment in Aiden's work, I could as show table and I could add a comment here, say, well done, great work, Aiden. And I could even record a little message to him as well. And I go save. Now let's just return to our book review, which I showed you early on. We find that with the other to do's. That was the piece. So we say view and we look over here and the only bit of work is Christopher's work. So we open it to have a good look at it. And there you can see. Now you can reassign work to the learner if you find that they haven't done it properly. And that means you'll just go to the redo, the to do and you just set it again. And that would mean that the work was not adequately done. You can also place it on a display board as I've shown you here. I'd expect the display board to show work that is of a certain standard that you'd like to showcase. But I'm going to show you how we do that with Christopher's work. So we're going to go to sharing and we're going to click on the display board. We're going to choose whether it is going It's an unapproved item because you're going to be moderating it. And then you'll have a good look at Christopher's work. You can allocate little emotes, emoticons and then decide whether you want to display it. And then when it's displayed, you can click on approved as I'm doing now. And when you turn off edit mode, you'll see that Christopher's work is now on the display board. You can display as many pieces of work as you choose. And that gives you a comprehensive understanding of display boards and all the learners can have a look at that. All of this may seem rather complicated as I'm rushing through it, but you'll just have to experiment and find out how to do it. And they can even you can open up your display boards for the parents as well. Or you can go as far as you want in that respect. The whole rushing through does seem to make it a lot more complicated. But you can come and see me if you need to ask any questions or you need any help. Thank you for watching this video. I urge you to please refer to the other videos on our YouTube if you are needing to learn a lot more.